I have a Minolta MD Tele Rocker X 135mm f2.8 lens here that I'm going to be pretty much fully disassembling. You can see that this is has the Rocker X body design with the rubber gripping ring here and the black metal body and this is a telephoto lens so it also has a built-in lens hood that kind of extends out here. Uh, and it's the um, it, it's the larger aperture version. Uh, most of the 135s also have a 3.5 version, so this is the 2.8. So it's the larger aperture version of this lens. This particular lens is in pretty good condition. Um, I just recently repaired it, so I'm going to be taking it apart again to demonstrate how to take it apart and then reassemble it fully. Because it is a Rocker X lens and one of the later lenses, the MD lenses, um, it is a little bit more difficult to take apart. And that compounds with that it's a telephoto lens, so it's much longer than the like the 55 millimeter lenses. Um, so there are some spots that it's a little bit harder to work with um, because you're going to have to be working down inside the lens much further than on the um, on the uh, normal portrait length lenses or so. Um, so it's a little bit harder to take apart, um, but it's not too bad overall. It's just a very a different layout than the um, than the uh, portrait length lenses because it is this telephoto lens and it is so much larger. So to start off, I'm going to get access to the back of the aperture blades. So I'm going to actually go in from the back this time. You can see that on the front of the lens there's um, this name ring and normally on the portrait lenses you go, would go in through the name ring and go in to get to the front of the aperture blades that way but on this particular lens that doesn't really do much. I'll actually take off this name ring but all it does is remove some of these front glass pieces. So you can actually clean inside the glass but on this lens to get access to the aperture blades I'm going to start in the back section. You can see that going around there are four screws here and that's what's actually holding on this whole mounting plate assembly here, so I'm going to just remove those four screws and lift off the mounting plate. Okay, so this entire, the entire mounting plate just lifts right off like that. I can see down into the lens and then also this mounting plate piece and I'm just going to put the lens aside for a second and can take a look at this mounting plate. Um, the only interesting thing on here really uh, that you can take apart is this other inner ring here which kind of keeps light out of the inner body of the lens and other debris and other stuff. Um, so it's just a little plastic ring in here attached by three screws and then on this other side you can see all the mechanical parts. So I'm going to take off this little plastic ring first with these three screws. Okay, so that little plastic ring just comes right out and you can see now that on this, the mounting plate, this is where the uh, aperture control ring is actually getting coupled to the, to the aperture. Um, so I'll actually go into this in a little more detail during the reassembly, but this piece here um, both has the mounting section here and then this is all the coupling inside. So I'll talk about what may need to be repaired in this and how it actually works during the reassembly. Back with the main lens body here, you can see now that I have the back lens group down here and then in this intersection is where you can if you focus in and out and it extends up and down. So I'm focusing in, now back to infinity. So it's a large inner section of the lens in here. And then the aperture control ring is sitting right up here. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do in this is to remove the aperture control ring. Um, so it just moves back and forth. Uh, and it has a small little ball bearing over in this section, or actually in this section right here, that is making the clicking sound when I move it back and forth. So I'm going to just carefully lift off this back. And the ball bearing. should be somewhere in here. Yeah, there it is. So there's the tiny little ball bearing. I'm going to set that aside and the aperture control ring aside. Now you can see that when I focus the lens in and out, um, much more than on the uh, normal length lenses, that it has this section in here that's extending up and down. It goes pretty significantly in and out when I focus in and out. So. And you can see that there's this little bar here on this side and another one on this side. It's in this groove. It's a little hard to see right now. but There's a groove down here. Um, and that bar is actually locking the intersection in here in place so that when you focus in and out, 
the, uh, the section moves up and down instead of just rotating. Uh, and to really continue on with the, re uh, with the disassembly, I have to take out this inner section um, and get it separate from this outer section. So I'm going to remove these two bars, and they're held in place by three screws each, just going along here. So I'm going to take out these three screws and then remove the bars on each side. So what I'm going to do now is, in this front section of the lens, with the um, with the uh, with this ring um, extended out, I'm going to focus it outwards and kind of keep track of. You can see now that there's nothing actually locking this in place. I'm going to keep track of where it actually goes out of here. So, kind of like this in this position. So it's got this little upper screw near the 135, and that's going to be important in a second. Um, but what I just separated is the focusing ring and the aperture, or the um, depth of field ring here, so the focusing ring, from the actual main lens body. And this is where, again, this lens is a little bit different in that um, you can take apart this, this focusing ring, but it's... Um, it's one piece really that it's, it comes apart as um, with this focusing ring and then the ring with the depth of field scale and all that that comes off. Um, so it's a little bit differently laid out. Now I have this section here, which is just the main body section with all the lens elements and different things. And you'll notice on this section, there are the main uh, screws that I exposed, there are three little, or there's little slotted screws going around here. So there's three lower ones and then an upper one which I pointed out before so there's one higher up um, and you don't want to mess around with these lower ones these three going around um, because they actually remove the the diaphragm blades um, and I'll talk about that in a second but right now uh, I'm going to remove this back lens element um, and this is another area where it's a little bit harder because this is a telephoto lens and it's longer but it has three screws down here that um, just un unscrew to remove the entire back lens element. Uh, so I, it's a little bit harder to work with because it is further down inside the lens. Lift off this and you can see that there's a, a metal ring on here, which is what the screws actually go into. I can take off and then this actual the back lens element, which just really has this one piece of glass at the rear end of it. So the, the back side has this one piece of glass. And now I have access to the back of the aperture blades. So I can go in and clean those. And to get access to the front of the aperture blades, I'm going to go back to this ring here. And like I said, you don't want to remove these three screws going around here, but you, um, unless you want to um, access the aperture and take that apart directly. But I am going to remove this upper screw here. There's a single upper screw that I'm going to undo. It's a little slotted screw, it's very tiny. Uh, it can be a little hard to access. So I'm gonna undo this just slightly. And now I'm gonna gri grip the front section of the lens and unscrew this entire front section. Okay, so what I've separated now is the diaphragm and then it has the focusing coils on here as well um, from the front optical uh, group, which is really where the main optics of the lens are. It has it's um, three or four big glass pieces and groups in here, um, and also from the uh, from this ring going around here that extends. So I'm going to set this aside. As I said, you can take apart the diaphragm and actually clean these individual blades. Um, but really it's much easier to clean it in this state right here. So you can go in with a Q-tip and clean the front side and the back side of the blades. The way this moves back and forth, you can work it back and forth. There's a little lever back here that you can use to work the aperture blades back and forth. Um, and I actually did mess up earlier and I removed these screws not really knowing what they were doing um, before I took out this top screw. Um, so I did take apart this section. So I recorded a separate section that documents that, so I, I can um, show that. But I, unless you need to, it's really not worth doing. So what's happened here is that the aperture blades have actually fallen out of the lens. Um, and this is really something I didn't intend to do. Um, I was loosening these 
three screws going around here and just noticed at the last moment that it was actually um, releasing the aperture blades and they all fell out before I could do anything. But since they did fall out, I'm going to um, actually be reconstructing this, the, the aperture um, and the, the reconstructing the diaphragm. Um, so I thought I might as well uh, show how that's done. Um, so to start with, just to talk about the, uh, the diaphragm mechanism, you can see that it's attached to the focusing mechanism, which is going to make work a little bit harder. Um, and this is where the aperture blades normally sit in here, in this black ring. Um, and if I go on the back, there's this post here with a little spring that uh, actually holds open the aperture. So when I move this open, um, it, the spring kind of pulls it back to be fully open. Um, so what I'm going to, not right now, is just slide out this black front plate. You can see that holds the aperture blades and kind of guides them in the little slots here, um, how they rotate back and forth. Now there's this second plate here, and this plate here also moves back and forth, um, and it's what has the post in it. Its post is right over here. So I'm going to take the, the entire plate here out just to make reassembly a little bit easier. To do that, flip, flip this over, and then just carefully slide this out, and hopefully only take the spring off this one side, the side with the post. There we go. So I'll just set that aside, and now I have these two pieces. And outside of the lens, you can kind of see how they interlock. This piece here has a bunch of little knobs, I think six going around, um, and this one has the little slots in it. So they kind of interlock like this, the little knobs going back and forth. And the aperture blades are on, um, part of them is on the inside here, and then part of it is on the outside in the other slot um, so that when this rotates back and forth the inside and the outside of the aperture blades move differently and that's what's actually opening and closing the aperture. So for the reassembly there are um, two things you just want to be careful of. One is that these aperture blades are, um, let me see if I can get one here, they're very thin. Um, you can see that they're just little pieces of metal um, and they have a little slot here and then a little post on this side. So they're very easy to damage. You can bump into something very lightly and they bend very easily. And the other thing is that you don't want to handle them directly with your fingers because you'll get um, oil from your fingers all over the aperture blades. And that's really going to be a pain because um, if you do take the blades out to clean them, you'll have to clean them again once you put them back in the lens. So I'm handling them here with um, tweezers, but I'm just very gently handling them, and I'm being careful not to bend them. So to start the reassembly, I'm going to flip this over. This is easier to do outside of the lens. Um, the way I want to have things working is I need to overlap the aperture blades correctly and get, the, get them in their little posts here, or I get the little posts in the little holes going around here just to start. So I'm going to just grab one, let me see here, grab one and just line it up going around like this and get it into the little post here. You can see it's kind of difficult already, just with one. Okay, so now I'm going to grab the next one and just do the same thing, but on top of the other one. I'm going to go like this, actually. So there, those two are set. I was stacking them the wrong direction there going to do the same with the next one as well, just in the clockwise direction. Go around. And do the same with the fourth here. And also for the fifth.
Okay, and you can see now the sixth one has to go right here. And this is the only challenging one. Um, I've just kind of been overlapping them up until now. But on the sixth one, what has to happen is that it needs to go underneath this first one and then on top of this other one so that it, they're all interlocking going around. Um, and that can be a little bit challenging um, because the first one can very easily, you, you can bend it or damage it easily if you uh, while you're putting it in place. And it's hard to keep it, all these blades in their little, uh, the posts in their little slots while trying to accomplish this. So I'm gonna just grab the blade here and Okay, now with a screwdriver or something, I'm going to slide this under there. Now, just gently keep positioning this over until I can get it there. So that's, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to just go back in with a screwdriver and push the blades in so that they're all resting around this edge circle here in the, in the center, the black metal ring. Um, this is just going to help with the next step, so I'm going to slide these up. And I also want to make sure that they're all actually properly in their slots. So that's looking good. Now what I want to do is, remember on this other piece here, it has all these little little um, uh, posts going around. And those posts need to go in each of these slots going around here. Um, so I have this kind of lined up, so I'm going to just find where one of these posts is. I'm going to, and then try to line up the slots for this. And it can be a little bit challenging. You can kind of see on the back, it does have a little guide. We can see. I need to make sure that all of these are in the proper spot and that should go flat. So there we go. So now you can actually see the blades moving back and forth and how this all operates. Um, and it should be fully opening and fully closing. There's nothing holding this in place at the moment, so I'm just very lightly doing this. Um, so I'm going to be very careful at this stage. Now the other kind of interesting part is getting this all assembled back into the lens body. So here is the lens body. It has to go in so that the post goes through the little uh, slot right here going back. So I think the easiest way to do this is I'm going to flip this over and just kind of feed this up through there very carefully. I'm just going to push on the sides. Okay. Just make sure everything's all flat in here. And now before really worrying about the rest of the reassembly, I'm going to just lock down this outer, lock down this black ring up here. Um, and we might have to readjust this later, but I'm going to find where it's just barely off the edge, where the blades are barely off the edge completely. And then go in and with these little slatted screws, I'm going to lock this down. So now you can see those little slide screws are going in right there. So now I can turn this over and you can check again that the aperture is fully opening and fully closing, which it is. You can actually see the little posts going back and forth in there. So to complete the reassembly of this piece, I'm going to just do one more thing and that's get the spring back on this post. So you can see the spring down there. It's only on this one inner post right here, which I just left it there and I need to get it back on this post up here. So I'm just gonna go in with a screwdriver and kind of try to hook onto it. Um, and get that back onto the post. It can be a little bit challenging and I want to try to avoid it coming off of this other post down here because that's a real pain. So it 
Looks like it did come off of that post. I'm going to... I'm just gonna get this one I have. You can see it has... Um, you want to have the side with the uh, jutting out here going up. So I'm just gonna get that on the post here. And this upper one to start... Okay, and now I'm going to have to get this on post down there. And the reason I didn't want to take this off is because actually getting it on the one down there can be harder because it's further down in the lens. I want to check. That uh, looks good. Make sure it's all the way on. And yeah, it looks good. So you can probably just skip all that unless the blades are really bad and you or you do mess up like I did and uh, <laughs> remove the, the blades by mistake. But in general, I would recommend against doing this step because it is harder and there's a much greater likelihood that you're gonna break the uh, blades um, or damage the blades or just break something in here. Um, so it's really not necessary in most cases, but that is how you would put together the aperture mechanism. So I'm just gonna set back I'm going to set this diaphragm assembly aside for a moment and go back to look at this front piece. You can see here that the lens hood just, I can slide it off the back now because there's nothing holding it in place. Um, and it's got, it's just a metal piece, but it does have this kind of plastic or plastic and metal intersection here um, that kind of locks it in place a little bit. So I'm just going to slide that off. And now I have just this front section of the lens. I'm going to just use this uh, the back lens cap to kind of have a flat surface to rest it on. And earlier I skipped taking off the filter ring uh, or the name ring here because it doesn't really get you access to much. Um, but if there is something like there's dust internally or there's fungus internally, this is a helpful step. So what this filter ring or the name ring is actually holding on is the front glass piece and that holds on a second glass piece. So by undoing this, I'll be able to access uh, the intersection of the front uh, glass group and really get some of that dust out of there and clean that a little bit better. So I'm going to go in with the spanning wrench and the two divots right here and just undo this. Okay, so this just lifts right out. You can see that here, I, this other glass piece just comes right out as well. So I've got the big glass piece right here. The, that's the one that's exposed to the outside. Um, so there might be some dust or something in there that you want to clean out. And now this next section, here, let me set this back on here. This next section has a little metal ring. I'm going to also lift out. There's nothing holding it in place. So this little black ring. And then this other glass piece back here. So there's one more glass piece that I'm going to just lift out. So another thicker glass piece that um, you can remove as well. And so that really allows you to clean a lot of the different elements down there in the lens. So there's one more thing I can take off on the back of the lens. You can see that there's this kind of brass colored ring going around here with three screws. And I'll just remove this. And this is actually going to remove the back optical piece as well. Um, so I'll just get all, most of the optical pieces out. There'll still be one left in there. Okay, so now I should just be able to grab the center section. Okay, there we go. So you can see that there's that metal ring and then this glass piece right here. There is still a, a glass in here. So you can see that there's just a little bit of glass in there. But you can now clean most sides of all the glass pieces, which is uh, very convenient. So that's something nice about this lens is that you, if there is um, fungus or dust or something inside the lens, you can very easily access and then clean uh, the, the different pieces.
So now I'm going to start on the reassembly uh, now that everything's pretty much taken apart. Um, and it's going to be pretty much the same order as uh, the disassembly. So I'm going to start, I'll just put back in the back glass piece. And we to get the back glass piece in, I'm going to, you can see that it has three little holes going around here. And then this metal ring has to go on top. So I'm going to just set this down for a second. And it's easier to get this started outside of the lens. So I'm going to just line that metal ring up so the three holes going around there are all aligned. And now I'm going to go in with the screws and get this started. Okay, and now on this other section of the lens, I'm going to line up the screws, just set this back down inside the lens and screw this, tighten this back down. Okay, so now on the front of the lens here, I'm going to put back in these different glass pieces. So I'm going to start with the thicker of the two glass pieces that I removed. Um, I'm just gripping it by the side, but this part is generally a pain because you'll get the glass all clean and then um, have, get some fingerprints on it while you're putting it back down into the lens. So I'm going to just lay it down there and then use a Q-tip to make sure that it's flat there in the lens. It looks like there's a little mark that I'll clean off. Okay. Okay, now get the um, black metal ring on top of that with the sides with the uh, little rings going around facing up. Is the front glass piece, so I'm just gonna get this in position. And again, go in with the Q-tip. And this one, I'm not going to clean off just quite yet because it has. I have to get on the uh, the filter or on the name ring, um, and that's. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get fingerprints all over this when I do that. So I'm going to, and get the name ring on next. Which I can then lock down with the spanning wrench. So in the two little divots on the side, I'm going to go in and lock this down. And now I can also clean off the front of the lens here. Okay, so that's got the front section mostly put back together, except for the lens hood. Uh, so I'm going to, for the lens hood, it's a lot easier to take off than it is to get it back on. It just is going to slide over this, but it's got this metal or this plastic ring, which I think might have a metal component too, going around the inside here, um, just on the outside, and that prevents it from normally sliding back on easily. So what I had to do is go around with a little, uh, with a screwdriver and kind of press this in, going around, and then just gradually work the lens hood back on um, but it, it is a bit of a pain and I'm not really sure um, the best way to do this so So with the lens hood back in place, I'm just going to flip the lens over again. And since that was such a pain to get back in, I'm going to reattach this back section so it can't come out. So I'm going to grab this section here with the diaphragm and the threads for the focusing and just screw this back in. Now I'm going to find the higher slot for the screw here. There's the three going around and then there's that higher one right there. Um, it's above the others and I'm gonna just get the slotted screw back in place and this just locks it down so it can't come undone. So I'm gonna flip the lens back over and now the 
lens hood should not be able to come out again, which is a good thing. Next, uh, I'm going to put the main lens section back into the, the body of, of the lens, into the, um, the focusing section of the lens. So I'm going to put this back into here. And you remember before, I kind of noted where this little upper screw was when I um, took this off um, while this was focused to infinity. And it kind of lined up with this 135, so they kind of went like this. Um, and that's really the only challenge for this, is that if you don't note how these come apart, um, there's a lot of different configurations where these two could screw back together, and finding the right one can be a bit of a challenge. So I'll talk about what you want to line up in the back, um, but it's easier if I actually just pick an orientation and get started to show. So I'm just going to go here. Okay, so in the back section, what has to get lined up is um, you need to be able to control the aperture here, and then you also need to be able to have this, these sections here, these flat sections, lined up with these inner slots here so that you can get the bars in. And the one thing about the aperture is that eventually the way that the aperture control is going to work is that the aperture control ring is going to sit over here. Like, here, let me just put this on to demonstrate. So it's going to be in, down in uh, this section down here with this little curve here and then the post here. And if you notice on the back of the mounting plate, the mounting plate has this little basket thing here and that's what goes on the post. And then on this crescent shaped thing, there's a little post here, little metal post, and that's what goes on the curve. So you need to have the, the um, you need to have the post and the curve in the right position. So basically the, the post needs to be like here and then the curve would need to be over here. And you can actually move these around to get these into different orientations depending on where you need it to be. So I'm going to go in here. You can see that I might not have things correctly lined up in this uh, specific orientation. So I want to have this focus to infinity. And now looking around so at infinity. I need to have the post a little bit further over. So I didn't quite get that lined up. Let me try this again. So I'm going to unscrew this front section. So let me try that lining up again. I'm going to go in, line this up. Okay, that looks a little better. I'm going to put this to infinity over here. You can see that I have part of it lined up. I have this flat section of the ring in here lined up with this um, slot down here. And I also have this post um, to the right of this little um, section here, the curve, which is what you need so that when these two go like this, they fold together, the um, the little curve will go inside there, and then this other one will actually be able to uh, go on the post and open and close that. So I haven't completed the assembly here, but this is just showing what's going to happen. So that's how you know that you have the right orientation. So now that I, now that I know that the uh, ring is screwed in the right place, the focusing mechanism is reattached in the right place, I'm just going to lock that into its position by reattaching these bars, these two bars on either side with the three screws in each. So what you want to check now is that when I focus in and out, it clicks or kind of snaps or you feel it stop um, abruptly at both ends. So at 1.5 and at infinity, it has this snap. What could be happening is that if you reattached it in the wrong spot, um, it would stop somewhere in here or even in here somewhere, um, and it wouldn't be reaching all the way to either extreme. The other thing you want to check, again, like I said, is that 
um, with the aperture control ring just um, slid, slid on top of here, um, that the post is clockwise from this little section in here um, that has the curve in it. So from this indentation where the aperture control ring curve will go. Okay, so I'm just going to remove the aperture control ring that I was using to kind of line things up and set that aside for a moment. Now I'm going to get the back glass piece uh, in, in its position. So remember it had a little ring that used, let me find them here, a little metal ring here that sits on top of it and then it uses three screws and it goes down in these three spots in the main lens body. So I'm going to get this again started because it's pretty far down there. I'm going to get it started outside of the lens. So I'm going to get the section here all lined up and get the screws in place. Okay, and now I'm going to set this down inside the lens. So I'm going to set this down here and lock it down into the main lens body. Okay, that's looking good. Now I'm going to put the aperture control ring back on for real this time. Um, so before I just slid it on, but I didn't get the ball bearing in place. So now I'm going to get the ball bearing in place as well. You can see the little grooves for the ball bearing right here. And then on the aperture control ring right next to the curve, um, there's a little pocket for the ball bearing. So I'm going to try to get that lined up there. And now to get this in place, I'm going to this kind of lined up and just push the after control ring down onto this section. Okay, it should be making that clicking sound as well now that I've got the ball bearing in place. And to complete the back reassembly, I have to get the mounting plate back on and actually couple this post here which controls the aperture to the aperture control ring and to the stop down lever. So this mechanical piece here on the mounting plate. Um, so the mounting plate is what actually has all the mechanical parts that do the coupling. As I already showed, it has this little section here that holds the, um, it goes on top of this lever and holds the lever so that when the section here moves back and forth, it moves the lever back and forth. So it, it, the lever goes in that little pocket there. Um, and that is what is directly coupled to the stop down lever on the outside. So if I move the stop down lever, you can see this intersection moves as well. And the other way that the aperture can be controlled is by moving the aperture control ring. And this little uh, section here on the crescent has a little post right here. And that post rests along the curve inside the aperture control ring so that as I rotate this back and forth, the post will move in and out um, as the curve goes up and down. And those two couple it back and forth. The only thing that can really go wrong with this back mounting plate section is that one of like the, the spring in here breaks or that there's some friction in here. But generally it's a pretty simple piece. Um, and as long as I get everything lined up, it should work pretty well. So to, to get this lined up, I'm going to set this kind of midway, uh, midway between fully open and fully closed and get the post and this little pocket of the mounting plate lined up first and then kind of move this back and forth until I can get the curve in it in aligned with the post back there. So I take a little bit of work. Okay. And now to lock down the back section, I'm going to rotate it until I can see the four X screws there and just reattach this. So what you want to check is that when I move the aperture control ring, it fully opens and fully closes. And then also when I move the stop down lever, it fully opens and fully closes. If the curve's not lined up properly or um, if the curve's not lined up properly, then the aperture control ring won't do anything. And if the entire thing's not, um, if the little lever from the diaphragm mechanism isn't in the pocket, basically nothing will happen. Um, so those are the two things you could possibly go wrong with that step. 
And finally, for the back reassembly, I'm just going to put back in this back metal protector piece. So it just slides in place and then has the three screws going around the, this plastic piece. Okay, so that's got the reassembly. You can check, make sure that everything's in working order, the focusing works properly, aperture control ring works properly, uh, and that the lens is looking good. Overall, the, this lens is um, a little bit harder to take apart than some of the portrait lenses, and it is an MD lens, so it uses some of the cheaper construction techniques and then also some of the cheaper materials that the later rocker lenses use. Um, and combined with the longer length and just its different construction, it is a little bit harder than the portrait lenses, um, but nothing too unmanageable. Uh, the one challenge I had was that I accidentally took apart the, the diaphragm and had to reassemble it, but that's completely optional. You don't need to do that in all but the most extreme cases, and you're probably better off not doing that unless the, the diaphragm is broken or there's a, a, an extreme amount of oil or damage to the blades. That's really not something you need to do. So just taking the lens apart to clean it internally, um, you can really easily clean the glass sections and clean the body sections, and that's a great feature. So overall, uh, not too bad, a little bit harder than some of the, the 55 portrait lenses, but definitely manageable to take apart and repair.